This is the Building Automation Monthly Podcast with Phil Zito, episode 134. Hey folks, Phil Zito here and welcome to episode 134 of the Building Automation Monthly Podcast. My name is Phil Zito. I'm the founder and CEO of Building Automation Monthly, where we use live training to help building automation professionals increase their productivity and profitability in their building automation careers. So in this episode, we are going to be talking about the four gotchas of power. Now, I don't know about you, but as a building automation professional, I never really gave a lot of thought to power. I mean, obviously you need power to turn on your controls. Obviously you need power for your inputs and outputs, but I never really sat there and thought about, man, do I use two transformer formers, one for the controller, one for the controls and the inputs and outputs? Do I have to, I mean, what kind of choices do I make? What does this mean for me? And the reality is that power can throw us for a loop. And that wasn't an intended pun there, but in retrospect, that is a kind of funny one. The reality is power is confusing for a lot of folks. And this became clear to me when I was working on our startup and checkout course, which is in beta at the time of this recording and may be available depending on when you're listening to this, but was working on our startup and checkout course. And initially it had 14 modules. And in these 14 modules, I'm, I'm looking at it right now here on my computer screen. Initially, module three was field trunks. But as I started thinking about it, I was like, man, folks really need to understand wiring and powering and just electrical fundamentals. And so I added a third module called module three, electricity and power. And we went through what's Ohm's law, what's the difference between VA and watts, how do you calculate idle versus operational loads, those kind of things. And then as I went forward with the course and I started to work on recording our section on inputs and outputs, you see, I've got this various CO2 meter and it's a really funky meter. I started looking at the wiring schematic of it and I was like, man, this is weird. It's got you know, common connected to the controller, but then ground coming from the sensor going to in the middle of the common wire. I mean, what are they trying to say here? And what it ended up being, long story short, was that they were trying to illustrate that the common is shared between the power source and the controller. And that when you run from the sensor back to the common on the controller, the common on the input, that internally that input common is shared with the common on the transformer. Now, if you're confused already just hearing that, then we've got an issue, right? Because a lot of folks are. And then think about it even further. What if I decided to use an external transformer, one for inputs and outputs and one or a separate transformer, one's for inputs and outputs, and one for the controller. Then the common's not shared. What do I do then? And I started thinking a BAS professional could get tripped up. I mean, I remember calling my buddy, Yusuf, who's a master electrician. And if you ever got any questions, he's in our Facebook group, and I encourage you to reach out to him about electrical things. He is a sharp man. And even him and I, I was sitting there in the parking lot. We were on Facebook video chat and we were looking at the layout of the sensor wiring and, and he had to go and draw this out because it was confusing. And that got me thinking, man, what if we did an episode on power? What if we went into the four gotchas that I've seen folks get really screwed I was about to curse there. I've been trying not to really messed up over and in my career that I personally made mistakes from and that I've seen others make mistakes from. And so I came up with these four gotchas that I think actually I know you will encounter at some point in your career. 
And gotcha number one is the gotcha. It's called the shared common. And when I just talked through that a little bit with that example, you've got a, a control device and it needs power and power is a loop, right? The power goes into the control device and it returns back to the common. Well, in some wiring instances, you need to have that common for the power to flow back to. And so in the past, a lot of what I would do is I would have uh, power in common, go to an actuator, and then I would have voltage DC go to the actuator and come back to the voltage DC output common. And that's how I would drive a zero to 10 actuator. But there's actually quite a couple things um, in both one of the actuators I'm using for my course, as well as the sensor I'm using for our course, where the common is assumed to be shared between the controller. So if you have a shared common, what does that mean to you? Well, it means a couple things. One is that if you're going to use a separate transformer, that you have to have a way of dealing with that. And some controllers can, some controllers can't. Which brings us to what's the easiest way to solve this problem is to use the same transformer for both the controller and the inputs and outputs. But therein lies a problem. When you go and you do that, you run into gotcha number two, which is idle versus operated load. I don't know about you, but when I started off in this career, I really didn't grasp how VA loads were calculated, how volt ampere loads were calculated. I sat there and I thought to myself, man, how, why is a transformer a hundred VA? I mean, I need 40 VA for my supervisory device or, you know, 20 VA for my field controller, but what's the other VA for? I mean, what does that mean to me? And so as I started to learn, I started to learn that VA volt amperes is essentially the amount of power, power being watts, that is available at the device by the time it gets to the device. And how you determine that is it's volts times current. And since most of our devices are in the milliamp current draw range, we don't have a lot of amp or multi-amp draw devices most of our stuff's you know not even a quarter of an amp and so when you do that you do you know voltage 24 volts times 0.25 and that gives you 6 va right if i'm doing my math right here don't do math live it's a horrible idea but that's how you calculate va is voltage times current and then you add that up and that becomes the operated load. And that's where it's really important. When you start to do these calculations, you can be tempted to calculate on idle load. You can say, oh, well, that sensor has this or that device has this draw. But what you need to understand is the amp draw from an actuator is completely different when it's operating versus when it's idle. And you need to understand that because you can have, you power up your loop, you get all your actuators wired up, everything's great. You start actually driving the actuators and stuff starts shutting off. And that's because your operated VA load is higher than your idle load, your amp draw load. And so that is important for you to understand the difference between idle and operated load. That's something I didn't know for quite a long time. So then gotcha number three is basically troubleshooting a rat's nest, as I called it. And this is where you start to jump commons. This is where you try to over, you try to deal with that issue of that shared common by using a bunch of jumper wires. You start using terminal blocks and you start intermixing AC and DC terminal blocks. And you're like, oh, look, there's a ground. I need a ground to terminate to. I'm going to use that ground. Not realizing that that is a DC loop and not an AC loop. And you can create all sorts of issues. And then that creates a rat's, rat's nest of issues for you. So you've really got to be careful when dealing with power 
that you go and you make sure that you're aware of where is any power source coming from, where are my commons coming from, where are my grounds, where are my hots. You need to figure all this out. Now, granted, I'm just talking about 24 volts here. I do not profess to be an expert on three phase or anything related to that. So from there, we move on to gotcha number four, which I've titled power independence. So at this point, we talked through the shared common. We talked about idle versus operated load. We talked about troubleshooting a rat's nest and how important it is to know what we're wiring to and where. Now we have power independence. So, okay. Earlier in this episode, I mentioned having a, oh, what did I say? What I said, two separate transformers, one for the controller, one for the IO. Now, why would you potentially want to do this? Well, it's all about separating that VA load. The last thing you want to do is to have a transformer loop that powers 10 controllers and have it also powering. And I know you're like, well, Phil, how could you power 10 controllers with a loop? Well, one of the things you can do is you can actually go and string up a bunch of transformers so that they're actually providing 300 VA or 400 VA. But as I was mentioning, you have this loop of power and you go and you provide it to maybe 10 controllers, maybe five controllers. And then you go and you decide, oh, I'm going to add my actuators to this loop too. And that's where things become a problem because now if you didn't calculate idle versus operated load, or you get some sort of ground or something that causes a huge draw, now you could take down all of those controllers. Or you can go and have all of those controllers on their own loop, and then you can have all of your I.O. on its own loop. That way, at least if that I.O. loop goes down power-wise, you have power independence and your controllers will stay up. Yes, that does not solve your controllability problem, but at least it keeps your controllers up and running, and it gives you the ability to visualize that there is something wrong with your controllability of your building automation system. Now, I know this has been a shorter episode here, but that was by design. I wanted to address a topic that, I mean, I may be all wet on this, but I feel like there's a lot of misunderstanding in the area of this topic. And so I wanted to provide an episode for you all that would talk about this topic and really help you better understand this. If going and wiring up controls installing controllers, doing point-to-point -point checkout, doing uploading and downloading of programs, creating graphics, creating trends, points extensions, doing functional testing. If all of that is something you do every day, or you know it's what you need to do to take your career to the next level, then I encourage you to sign up for, at the time of this recording, it'll be a wait list, but it may be available by the time you hear this. Sign up for our startup and checkout course. And you can do that by going to buildingautomationmonthly.com forward slash 134. Once again, that is buildingautomationmonthly.com forward slash 134. And what I also want you to do is to go into the discussion section and let us know what issues you've run into with power. What are the gotchas that you know of that you think people should be aware of? Help share your information help grow the greater building automation community by sharing the wisdom that you have gained over your years of experience in the building automation trade. Once again, my name is Phil Zito. I'm the founder and CEO of Building Automation Monthly, and I thank you for listening to this episode. I really appreciate every one of you. It is a absolute honor that I get to deliver value to you every single week. Thank you so much for blessing me and giving me the chance to do that. And I hope you all have an awesome week and I will talk to you in next week's episode that I'm super duper excited of. We're going to go through the five ahas of subnets. We're going to really look at subnets and we're going to really kind of figure out what they are, what they mean to us as BAS professionals and why it's so important for us to understand subnets. Thanks a ton for being here. Can't wait to talk to you again in next week's episode. Take care.